Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk more about structs and how to use them with receiver functions. And before we get into that, um, there was something I forgot to mention in the last video, and that's structs. You can have structs within a struct. So a field in a struct can also be a struct. So as an example, we'll recreate that person struct that we had in the last video. Uh, put the first name as string, last name as string. And then we're going to add another struct as a field here. And that struct we're going to call contact info. And so now we have to create this contact info struct. And in our contact info struct, it's going to have two fields. A uh, field for the email, which is going to be a string, and then a field for the zip code, which I will... So in our person struct here, we have three fields. First name is a string, last name is a string, and then we have a third field here called contact info that's also a struct. So we have a struct within a struct. So that's what I forgot to mention in the last video. Now, moving forward with this video uh, of, using, of uh, structs having receiver, receiver functions, we'll write our main function here. And then we'll create a person struct, and I'm just going to call it Kevin. So if you saw the last video, you'll know how to declare and initialize a struct variable. And here, contact info, contact info, uh, email will be uh, example at example.com, and then we'll have this zip code as one, two, three, four. Uh, you always have to have a comma at the end, even if it was the last one. Otherwise, you'll get a syntax error. Okay. Let me save that. So, so far, so good. Uh, no errors. Uh, wait. Spoke too soon. Oh, okay. That's no biggie. All right. So now, receiver functions. Um, it's pretty much the same way as with the custom types of our, our deck project. You just create a function, and then um, in commas here, you just put in the type of struct that would be uh, able to call this function, and then a um, variable name here. So I'm going to do p person, and then the function is just going to print all the fields and their values in the calling struct p. So it's just going to do fmt.printf for print format. And if you do percent %v, that will print all the values. But if you add a plus sign here, you'll get the values and the field names. So it won't just print Kevin. It'll print first name is Kevin. So it'll be a little easier for us to look at. And let's uh, save this. And then under right here, we'll Call, we'll use our um, Kevin uh, variable here, which is a struct of type person, and call the print function here. So Kevin.print. And then what ha should happen is that uh, we should be executing this function, and it'll print all the field names and whatever value has been assigned to it. Um, so like I said, this is a receiver function, so only person structs uh, uh, person struct variables can call this. So let's uh, run this. Um, make sure we're in the right directory here. Okay. As you can see, we get our struct printed out. First name's Kevin, last name's Lynn, contact info, with email example. Example.com and zip code as one two three four. 
So that's pretty much it, but I'm going to go into one more thing because it's going to lead into the next video. And I'm going to create another receiver function here, and it's going to be called update email. So we want to change the email address for this um, struct variable, Kevin, here. So update email, and it'll take one uh, parameter called new email, which will be a string. This is going to be the email that's going to be replacing the current one. So p dot contact info dot email equals new email. And then I want to call it right here before we print. So this is the original email here. I'm going to call the update email function. So Kevin dot update email. I'll pass in the new email we want to use. So I'm just going to call it my new email at example.com save that and then uh, run it and let's see what happens so first name's Kevin blah 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 let's look at the email so email is still example example.com so the email did not change even though we said here that the contact in the, the email field should be set to whatever is passed here as an argument so why is that? And that's what's going. That's what we're going to talk about in the next video. Next video, we are going to finally talk about pointers and pass by value, which will help us explain why this occurred and how we can go about getting the desired behavior. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.